good morning everyone or wherever you are it is currently um thursday and it's 20 past nine in the morning um i initially filmed a video yesterday for you all um which covered this eye here but when i went to edit the video back out or like export it onto youtube um my hand was in the way for a lot of it like you can really see what i was up to i hope this is in focus let me just check yeah i think it is um yeah so obviously that's not ideal because i want you guys to be able to kind of see what i'm doing and not have my hand like over the drawing the whole time um so i thought i would come back on here this morning and film the other eye um and hopefully this will work out better for you um now i had a bit of a nightmare day yesterday um for those of you who follow me on social media will know about this i kind of started uh, two pieces, so I started two harvest mouse, uh, mice, um, well, I started a harvest mouse and I think I worked on the first one for about an hour before I decided that I really wasn't happy with it. Um, and then I redrew, I redrew the, uh, the first, um, the mouse but in a set with like a different pose, a different angle. Um, and I worked on that for most of yesterday. And it kind of got to, I want to say, like, I don't know, I'm just trying to work out, I'm just trying to figure out where the dark bits go. Um, it got to, like, f five o'clock, and I looked at it, and I just really wasn't happy with it again. This hasn't happened to me for years. Like, there hasn't been a stage where I've kind of scrapped everything I've done in a day. And I got really stressed and I got a little bit worried. I was like, oh no, what's going on? But I think it's, you know, a lot of you said that it could be something to do with the moon, um, the, like the where the lunar cycle is, like everyone's really struggling. Because um, I think it's to do with like the lockdown and the isolation and stuff like that. I think I'm beginning to sort of find it quite challenging to work from home because everyone's here all the time. And it's just like a subconscious anxiety that I'm kind of dealing with at the moment without even really knowing about it so I think that might be it but hopefully um I'll be okay today so yeah as I said I started filming this video um yesterday but again just wasn't happy with it so it's actually the second video I've I filmed and scrapped in the last couple of days normally I'm quite good I can just sort of like film and upload and not really have um too much of a an overthink about it but for some reason I just really wasn't happy um, the content was okay because I spoke in depth about how to grow an Instagram as an artist and it's a video that will definitely be coming soon but because I did it as a real time draw with me it was um I just felt like I didn't really get that much done I just didn't get that much covered in the video so um like because I was working on uh, Winnie's dog bed and yeah I think I filmed for like 45 minutes and then that's such a big piece, it didn't really seem like I got much done, so I thought it was a bit of a pointless video and be quite boring for what to watch it. So I think I will try and refilm that video but make it like a bit more interesting content wise for you to watch. Um so yeah, it's been a bit of a couple of weird days. But I have some really exciting news. Actually, I need to sharpen this pencil. Um for those of you who will undoubtedly ask what pencil sharpen I, I use, if it's just going to focus, I use the KUM, I use the Metal Masterpiece, um, and it looks a bit like this. I got it off Amazon, it was quite expensive, I think it was about £20, but it's lasted. I think I've had this one for about six months. Um, you can get replacement blades for it online, um, and you can just like get little screwdrivers to change the blade. And It's, it's a bit fiddly, but it's the best sharpener I have I used? I, I've never found another sharpener that gets my pencils as sharp as what this current one does. I'll show you. Oh no, well I would show you, but the blades aren't actually, aren't actually that sharp. So it's not really giving me the full result. Um, but yeah, I mean even, even still, it's not the sharpest I can get it, but I can get... Oh, there you go. Found one here from earlier. I can see how sharp that is. That's amazing. It's really satisfying. Um, I don't really know why that bit, little bit's gone there, but we can work with it. Um, so yeah, some quite exciting news. I have got coming today a, a like a webcam camcorder thing, so I can do live streams onto YouTube and Facebook and stuff. Because um, I thought it'd be a really good opportunity whilst we are 
all at home um, and sort of like twiddling our thumbs sometimes and feeling a bit anxious it'd be nice to actually be able to come on here and do some live stream videos for you um, so because obviously at the moment I'm just like sat here talking to a camera whereas you will actually be able to like engage and we'll be able to chat about stuff and yeah I'm really really excited to be able to offer that to you and obviously it means because this is one of the things I've been waiting on before I launched the Patreon um, means that I can do offer the, the live stream tier of my Patreon which yeah which will hopefully be live for you all in the next couple of weeks hopefully if I can get my arse in gear um yeah I'm really excited it's gonna be a lot of work I understand it's gonna be a lot of work I've spoken to several people that say it's quite hard going but it's fine we can make it work apparently it's gonna be taking on like another job but it'd be nice I'm really looking forward to doing it um and offering like a bit more of a teaching platform um so yeah anyway the camcorder is turning up today um I'm hoping it's going to be good enough quality. Like the camera that I film on at the moment, which is the Sony um, 6400, is a 4K camera. Um, and I have loads of people ask me what camera I use, and yeah, it is the Sony 6400. Um, but the webcam that I ordered, I could have ordered a 4K webcam, um, like camcorder thing, but it didn't have the live streaming feature. So this, the camera that I've got on order, is ultra HD so it's 2.7 which I thought would be perfect for like, live streaming and stuff um, and yeah that is uh, has got the sort of the, the webcam feature so hopefully it will be okay to film and do live streams I'm just trying to like map out um, where the this bit is, so like the slightly brighter bit of this owl's eye. I find it really hard to say owl because um, I just want to say owl all the time. It's a, it's a thing. It's a thing. So for the majority of this drawing, um, so far on the actual eye, I've just been using the Faber-Castell Polychromos. Um, which are great for this kind of work, like detail work. Um, for some of you who know, I ordered some of the Derwent Light Fast um, pencils. I think I ordered about eight shades. Um, they're so, so soft. Um, the softest pencils I have ever used. The Faber Castell are quite hard, so they're great for detail. I wouldn't say if you were after getting a lot of detail into your work, I would definitely not recommend the Derwent Light Fast. They are a beautiful pencil and they're absolutely brilliant. Um, you can cover a lot of area quite quickly. But they're almost, they feel, um, they f I don't know, I mean, I would love to see what layers I can get into, or like what details I could get into a drawing just using the Light Fast, but I don't feel like it would be that many. I just, I think, um, I always thought the Luminous, the Caran d'Ache Luminous were like the softest pencils, but yeah, after trying the Caran um, sorry, the Derwent, like fast, they are definitely super soft. I hope that this is all, I'm not sort of covering this up too much. That was my worry. I've changed the camera angle, um, so hopefully it'll be okay for you all. Um, I find owls quite funny because they look not funny but um, they just look really scared they just look like super startled they've just got such a expressive expression if you know what I mean quite funny it's, it's quite dark it's definitely darker than the other eye it's 
I think one of my problems is, is that um, I overwork areas and I think that's something that I struggle with and that's probably where I went wrong yesterday. I went too heavy too quickly with the pencil marks and I couldn't really get them and look what I was going for, um, which is super annoying, but it is what it is. Um, right, I just want to get a little... How are you all doing? How are you coping with lockdown? Are you learning something new? Are you spending time in the garden? Are you almost pretending that you're, um, you've are you got a couple of weeks holiday? Like, are you drawing? What are you guys up to? I would love to learn a new skill. Oh, I've still got this lockdown. I, th I, I was thinking yesterday actually because I, so before this whole lockdown started, I went and stocked up on um, a load of the pencils that I use. So the, um, I went and stocked up on all the poly crayons pencils, um, but I couldn't get hold of many luminants, or any luminants for that matter, um, which was really annoying because um, they're a pencil that I use quite a lot. Um, and now I'm beginning to, not running out, but I will be running out if I'm not careful soon for some of the colours that I use quite a lot. Um, and my, my worry is, is that, yeah, if I run out, I'm going to be a bit screwed. Um, but I thought, oh, it'd be a great opportunity because I've got no watercolours and stuff. So maybe I can use this time wisely and not learn any skill, but just like try and do something with my time instead of just not wasting it. But yeah, I might do some like little watercolour studies and just see whether I've got the ability to be able to do that. That'd be quite exciting to try. Just some sort of like loose equestrian studies. I don't know, I never tried it. Well, I have, but I haven't tried it for years. So it'd be quite interesting to see. Um, uh, and obviously like, I can film it. And um, yeah, it'd be quite interesting. So currently just working out where the outside of the, like how the outside of the eye works, like um, with different colours, it's sort of like a ready pink, so I'm going in with um, ivory from the Polychromos, um, just sort of work out a bit of a base layer, and then going in with um, burnt sienna. One thing that a lot of people have asked for is um, a tutorial or like a video where I break down how I draw um, white on white. So like around this, around the head of the owl here is um, obviously white because it's a barn owl. So um, maybe that could be like one of my first Patreon videos um, because white is never white and um, white is always an interesting one to to draw because there's a lot of quite surprising colours that you wouldn't always think of um, that go into that kind of work so yes I'm, I'm thinking about doing that I'm also very conscious that I um, used a lot of my camera battery yesterday so I feel like I'm kind of and I forgot to put it on charge because I don't like charging my um, battery camera battery and I get worried that it's gonna like ruin the battery if I leave on too long so I, did, I wanted to film and get this filmed and edited before lunch because I really wanted to have a video up live last night and I just couldn't make it because as I said things just didn't go to plan and I wasn't happy with the filming so um, and like the angles and stuff so I thought I'd try and redo it today One thing I was going to ask you all, um, and for those of you who've got any technical knowledge, please do listen up now. Um, I really want to, um, like loads of people have asked whether, um, hang on, let me just figure out where to put this bit. Um, loads of people have, figured, uh, have asked where, whether I can, um, film like all of the drawing and make it into like a voiceover time lapse kind of thing 
Um, and I really want to do that, but my problem is, is that I'm working off a hundred, no, it's 256 gig um, MacBook Pro. Um, and I'm using 128 um, gigs of uh, like an SD card storage. Obviously, I've, like, I've got several different SD cards. Um, so my problem is, is that when I film, um, I film onto an SD card, I then import it into my Mac and edit it off my Mac, uh, and my storage qu very quickly fills up on the Mac. Now, obviously, I, I realise I can get an external hard drive, but I'm not really sure like how to collate all the footage, and then don't I? Because I feel like I still need to import it into my Mac, and therefore it won't have the right amount of space. I'm just wondering how you would collate like 40 hours of footage or whatever because sometimes my, my drawings do take so many hours whether it's, there's a way to collate all that footage into one video so I can film like really long tutorials for Patreon and really long in-depth tutorials where I sort of break down everything um, so yeah if anyone knows of how I can do that that would be, um, be amazing because yeah I need that's something that I am a little bit worried about is that I can't film for more than like a few hours at a time and then import and make a video because yeah my Mac just can't handle it. Well at the moment I can't handle it anyway. Um, so yeah I need to kind of work out a way for a, I hope that makes sense. So any advice would be greatly appreciated. It's super sunny here in the UK. I don't know where what the weather's like where you are, but I think it, like it's April and um, it's like it's April the seventh, I believe. And like yesterday, we managed to have dinner as a family in the garden, which was really nice. Because um, yeah, it's only April, so it just seems like something. Some nice things are happening. The weather is super nice here. Um, Feeling a little bit unsettled still with the fact that everyone's at home. I'm very used to being here on my own and obviously I've got like, my whole family around me so that my mum, my dad and my brother are all working from home. Which, um, yeah, is making me a little bit anxious but I'm just very aware that there's a lot of people, not a lot, but you know what I mean, there's people in the house. So one of the colours I really like to use for like around this eye area um, because when a colour has got quite a yellow base layer um, or like a yellow under layer um, I feel like one of the things that's worth pointing out here is that when you are looking at base layers you almost are looking at the colour of the skin that's underneath the fur and the feathers or whatever you're drawing um, so like, yeah, I don't really know how else to explain it. Um, so like, I feel like I can see this is, ah, uh, sorry, um, 
yeah, I feel like this is kind of like a beigey kind of pinky colour that I can go in with the additional like details over the top. I'm going to be using some Caran d'Ache um, beige because I feel like that's a really good sort of like creamy grey colour which is really nice for works really really nice with the buff titanium from the luminance colours it's sort of like a pinky yeah a beigey grey and then I can just go in with like a bit of um, Bliss. I think this is colours. It's Bista. Yeah, it's Bista from the Polychromos. And just using like a super light pressure to just blend everything together a little bit onto on the paper. more pink through here when I say pink I'm actually using I think this is light flesh from the polys but um it does remind me a little bit of like a pinky kind of colour and then around here it's a bit more yellow for the base layer so I'm going to use ivory One really good um, little tool to have is a soft brush because it, like for me what I've done here is I've gone straight in for the dark areas with black around the eye and if you go like, like get all the sort of like dust and stuff off your fingers or the side of your hand it will smudge um, and it won't look pretty and you have to rub it all out but if you use like a really soft brush that doesn't happen as much so as a little sort of like little tip that I've picked up over the years. I feel like I need to put some like a um, bit of a different colour through here. So I think I'm going to use some cinnamon from the Polychromos because it's a slightly darker I think, yeah, this is cinnamon it's a slightly sort of more ready pink it's a really great colour actually I use it quite a lot um, there's like quite a lot of like staple pencil colours that I use in the majority of my work um, and I think that might be quite an interesting or good video to film so if you are thinking about um, getting not a whole set of polychromos, but maybe you're just in, like interested in starting up some neutral colours for portrait or animal portrait work. I can definitely um, recommend some colours that will probably come in really useful for you. So um, yeah, I think that could be quite a useful video for some of you. I'm just going to grab some, this is Burnt Sienna from the um, Caran d'Ache Luminance just to darken up some of the ready kind of areas um, around the eye because this is a really great sort of ready brown 
kind of colour. I've used it quite a lot on the portrait from Winnie's bed. Um, so Winnie is the, for those of you who don't know who Winnie is, Winnie is the boxer dog that I have been working on for like the last, I want to say probably a month to a month and a half on and off um, for the Olympic rider Charlotte Dujardin. Um So yeah, I've been definitely rekindled like her love for the current Dash luminance I was working on that portrait. I went for a stage where I was only really using um, the polychromos, but I feel like ever since I've been doing some other work, I've definitely found a love for some other pencils again. Which is great because the polychromos, um, the, sorry, the Carandash luminance aren't cheap, but the problem is they're quite hard to get hold of here in the UK, especially at the moment, because I believe they come from Switzerland and I think the, they're kind of having a bit of in, uh, trouble importing them with the whole virus that's happening at the moment. So, yeah, they're quite hard to get a hold of. So I'm just kind of trying to use them sparingly because I'm running out a little bit. I mean, very worst case scenario, I'll just have to buy a whole new like, tin of them, like another 76 pencils. But that's a bit unnecessary because I think it would cost about... 270 or quid maybe it'll be quite expensive so I would only do that if this sort of isolation goes on for ages but yeah um, I can't think whether I told you about the video I filmed that I scrapped the other day yeah but it was about how to grow your Instagram as an artist because mine is currently it's just about to hit 45,000 I believe so currently I'm at yeah 44,977 so that will hit, probably hit 45,000 in the next day or whatever so um oh, I've lost my reference photo now I email it to myself so I need to find out my emails um now I don't feel like that's good enough come on zoom in there you go um yeah so I was gonna film a video all about how to grow your Instagram as an artist because I feel like a lot of you um wouldn't maybe be interested to know how I've got mine to how I've got mine I mean I haven't followed any rules I haven't done any sort of algorithm courses it's sort of like the things that I've learned along the years that work for me and would hopefully work for some of you guys um so yeah if you'd like to see that do let me know gonna put you on pause for a second whilst I just make sure I've got enough um, battery life left to do a little, tiny bit more filming okay I'm back um, I actually had to go and charge my camera for a bit um, so I feel like this like I've added this bit in um, but I thought I would save this other white bit because it would make quite a nice um, tutorial on how to draw white on white is what I'm thinking anyway um, but I've, I've got a few things I need to go and do this morning um, I've had a, a couple of orders for some large format prints um, and I don't do them myself I can't print them myself here so I've had to contact the guy who does all my printing luckily he's still in and out of the, of the, it's like the printing shop a little bit so he can um, run some prints off for me which is ideal um, but yeah I thought that this would, bit would make quite a good like, little tutorial um, so currently as I said I'm using like um, this is buff titanium from Caran d'Ache uh, the luminance to 
put some base layers down now i don't always do this when i draw white um, i always put a base layer down if it is super white like there's a bit on around here that is really really bright white so i will just get some like the white from the luminance i always use a luminance white because i feel like it that is the softest brightest white that of all the color pencils that i own and it's really nice for a base layer and i can still go over it with other pencils but it just won't um it would just not make the pigment too strong so i put a little bit of a base layer down like that of that on that bit and then a couple of other colors i really like to use for um drawing white are the if i change over the pencil is um warm gray one and cool gray um cool gray one from the polychromos um, and then I can just sort of like very gently and it's really important that you use like a light pressure um, just start sort of mapping out some uh, where the fur or I mean is it fur on these feathers no they're, they're kind of feathers on a owl's face isn't it so yeah just start it's very very light you can barely see but it's just enough to give a little bit of an indication that there's um, something there and obviously I didn't put any um, pigment down over here and like no base layer but that's not a problem because this colour is so light anyway that sometimes you don't really need to do that. Um, and then you can always go over with a slightly darker colour so I've got beige here by the Carandash Pablos very very lightly using sort of a very light pressure just putting some marks to indicate where the fur goes like what direction it's going in that's really really important when you're drawing fur and feathers or whatever you're drawing so pay attention to exactly the direction of where the fur is going and another thing that's really important to do is to pay attention to the length of the fur of what you're seeing in front of you and the two things like if you so if i did like massively long pencil strokes here it just wouldn't look really like realistic at all um, so it's really really important to pay attention to these finer details because it's what really makes a portrait look more realistic so I've got um, raw umber here from the Carandash Luminance this side of the owl's face is slightly darker than this side so it's really important that I pay attention to making this side a bit darker and I can do that by putting lots of layers in and I'd rather go slower with white so when I'm drawing white on white I'd rather build it up with lots of layers not going too intense because obviously white is very subtle you need to keep it as subtle as you possibly can so I'm just sort of like just very roughly mapping out exactly where to put Some of the um, the fur direction in and this bit around here is quite a bit darker so i can afford to put almost like this bit down as a, a bit of a base layer and i think what i could do as well is also blend it out with a bit of um buff titanium from the current dash luminance and make it super smooth and give it a sort of like a nice cream like a creamy kind of beige color So once I've done that, I can sort of just start picking out, going in with a slightly heavier pressure and start picking out exactly where the darker bits of the fur or the feathers are, the direction of the fur and just going in with some sort of, some more detail. I'm not using this as sort of like the final layer where I put all the finite detail in because there's no need for that. Um, one thing that's really important to mention here is that if there is a bit of, um, an area which has got a bit more shadow in it I'll always go in with like a cool grey which is a more bluey tone because it gives the indication of some shadow so like this bit here is a different like this is more warm grey this is more cool grey over here um, 
and it definitely makes a difference. Like this side of the, as I said, this side of the face is a lot more um, darker, so I can go in with sort of some more greys and stuff and make it a bit appear a bit more darker and sort of hype up the contrast a little bit on this side. It's really important when you're working with white um, animals and you're working in colour pencils not to rush any of this. <sighs> see like that bit there, I don't know whether you can see it on camera but I kind of, I put a tiny bit too much pressure in there which isn't a problem because I can go in with my Tomo, uh, Tombow mono eraser and just erase it slightly and then go in again and just blend it out so um, it, it's not obvious. With colour pencils you are going backwards and forwards with layers, blending layers, blending the others, blending to make it as smooth as you possibly can for the base layer and the really good thing, and no, it does depend what paper you're using, but obviously this is the Fabriano Artistico Hot Press um, watercolour paper and this is a brilliant paper for taking lots of layers, so I can go in and really, really um, make sure that I'm putting layers down to make it seem as 3D and as detailed as possible. I'm feeling a lot better today now. I've come, I've had a bit of a break where obviously I did a bit more drawing and I kind of plotted and mapped out where I was going to go with the white hair and what pencils I'd be using for it. Um, and I've come back and I feel a lot more, not confident, but I feel a lot happier today. I don't know what was going on yesterday. I don't know whether it's because I felt like I just wanted to have something done. I don't know whether I, it's almost like I feel guilty because um, I've got a lot of commission work that I need to be getting on with, but some of the commission work that I'm doing at the moment, it's super intense. And um, yeah, I think it was just, I hope you're in focus actually, let me just make sure you're in focus. Um, it was beginning to get to me a little bit um, because it was taking quite a long time and not that I, I I mean I really don't mind doing pieces that take me longer but sometimes it's nice to have a bit of a break where you can kind of work on something a bit smaller and sort of like challenge yourself in a different way um but yeah I was just struggling a bit with like finding motivation to sort of get up and keep going with the pieces that I'm working on like Hooli and um Winnie now Hooli I'm kind of saving a little bit for um some real like some live streaming and also some Patreon work but Winnie um, because I've got like the exciting bits done now, like her body, her face and her eyes and things like that and it's just like a bit more than mundane so it's like the bed and um, obviously the sooner I get it done the better but it's one of those things it's like I just wanted to have it, I just, I just need a bit of a break from it I think. So as you can see I hope um, I'm going in with sort of super super light pressure and barely putting sort of pencil to paper here uh, but just to give the illusion of a very soft um, sort of downy fur or feather Um, something beeping, I don't know what it is, like whether you can hear it, but it's because there's people in the house. Now again, I am going to go in with a bit of blue over this buff titanium, very light pressure because this is more of a shadowy side, so there is a tiny bit more blue. So it's important that I put that in because it's just like the really small details like that will make a massive, massive difference to the overall portrait. I mean, there's a lot of secret colours um, that go into anything you're drawing. Um, like white is never white, black is never black and things like that. So again, going in with a super light pressure and barely ever, like barely touching the paper here. Um, just to uh, give the illusion of the feather. 
feathers. Now the feathers are meeting in the middle here and I need to, this side is brighter, this side is darker, so I need to get rid of this little line that I've mapped out with in the middle. And I almost need to and get a white pencil. Oh no. Um, and just make sure that I'm not going to lose the brightness of this side. Compared to that side, so I'm sort of just going in and going as close to the line as possible and then just erasing the line as I go. Making sure that it's as faint or invisible as possible then going in with the white again keeping this side as bright as, as I said, as bright as possible. And then the other really good thing when you do this is that you can feel as soon as you um, overstep it with a pencil, it's, it feels different so you know that when you've gone too far, if that makes sense. Like if you are just putting your pencil onto the paper like this, um, it feels very different to what if you were to go over a, a bit that you've almost already burnished. So I'm just going to put a little bit of this cool grey very, very lightly on this side here. And I need to almost try and build, build up, but what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to put some warm and cool grey on here. I'm then going to go in with a um, sort of like a burnish white layer to smooth everything out a little bit and then I'm going to go in with um, sort of like the, the beige colour from the Pablo's and just map out some of the darker areas that sort of that give the illusion of there being sort of like a, a pointy um, bit here. I hope this is making sense. This is what I'm going to be sort of trying to explain more and more and more in detail on Patreon for those of you who are interested in a sort of more of a teaching platform. This is the sort of content that I'll be giving you, but obviously in much more detail, I'll be sort of really going through and explaining why I'm using what colours I'm using and why I use the techniques that I do use and sort of like um, things like that. So, as I said, hopefully that will be live in the next week or so. Fingers crossed everything goes to plan. Um, one pencil that I will try and get a hold of here is the warm, um, what is it? Raw Umber. Um, I always need like a uh, I'm trying to think what colour it is, but I don't know whether this will this will work. This is brownish beige by um, the Corin Dodge Pablo's as well. Sort of like a bit of a purpley kind of colour. One thing that obviously you can do if you do go a little bit too heavy, but I knew obviously haven't put too much uh, pressure down, is you can go and you can sort of erase and bring out some of the highlights if you've got like this mono um, eraser or something similar to this. You can sort of like really go in and pick out your highlights and things like that. I feel like white um, is really enjoyable to do, but it does it does take a little bit of time to to become happy because you are. I find that I'm working a lot slower anyway when I do white, 
um, because as I said you can't rush it and you, you don't want it to be super obvious like it needs to be subtle the biggest thing with white that makes it look realistic is, is the fact that it needs to be super subtle so you need to do spend some, as, as much time as you need to making everything blend it out and as um, subtle as possible Obviously, there is um, some sort of fun, really finite detail that is going into these feathers here, um, which again, it's all these sort of fine details that make the white and white theme as realistic as, as possible. So, you know, you spend the time doing this and it pays off in the end. So I'm currently using like a, um, I think this is warm grey two, this warm grey three actually from the Polychromos. And the Polychromos is so great for detail work because you can get such a sharp pencil point on them. So. There is a tiny bit more detail down here. Um, and then yeah. I just keep sort of like going in between working with sort of like blending it out, putting some detail in, blending it out some more and then building up the, the piece from there and eventually you know I'll get to a stage where I don't want to overwork it anymore um, or I don't want to work with it anymore in general really and then that's normally the time to sort of call it a day and walk away and pick up another area and then work on that. Now I'm just putting on some, um, this is the uh, Bista colour from the Polys. Um, and this is again one of the sort of colours that I can just very literally the lightest pressure and just give a indication that there's um the blending of the sort of fur. Okie dokie. I think that's pretty much where, I mean I am going to work a bit more on this bit here but um, I'll be going backwards and forwards and I think it might get a little bit boring because there's only so much I can sort of say um, and I've been filming this bit for quite a while so I think I'll call it a day here and um, I will say goodbye to you. Um, I hope you're all having a really nice day. I hope it's really sunny where you are and I hope you're keeping busy that you're drawing or doing something creative if that's what you're into. Um, and I will be keeping you guys updated obviously with when the Patreon goes live and when I start live streaming. For those of you who um, don't already follow me on Facebook then that is probably where I'm going to start sharing the live stream but I'll put everything um, link below if you could possibly give this video a like if you have enjoyed it because it really does help my channel out and um i will see you in the next one all right guys i'll see you very soon lots of love bye